In this video, we will show how easy it is to extract data from HDFS using Pentaho Data Integration's graphical programming capabilities. We'll show two common techniques. First, we'll create a simple job that copies files from HDFS to our host operating system and then invokes a bulk database load. Then, we'll demonstrate how to create an ETL transformation that streams data directly from an HDFS file into a database table. This video builds on our previous demonstration that showed how to create and run a Pentaho MapReduce job. You are looking at the PDI job we previously created. This MapReduce job counted entry page views by website section, creating an output file containing the category for that section, the section itself, and the count of the page views. Let's extend this job to copy the result file to HDFS from HDFS to our host operating system and then bulk load that into MySQL. First, let's remind ourselves where the data was put. We can go and look at our Pentel MapReduce step and see that the output was, in, was sent to the HDFS directory web logs slash entries. We're going to first copy data from that uh, HDFS directly, directory to our host operating system. So we use the Hadoop copy files step. We'll connect these up. The green arrow indicates we only want to proceed to that step after successfully executing the Pentaho MapReduce job. We'll open this up. We'll browse. Let's connect to HDFS. Let's find the directory we're talking about. It's the entries directory and the output file is part 0000. That's the output of a reducer. Uh, let's browse for our target. Our target, we're going to put in the entries folder locally. And now I want to rename the file in the output. So we're going to say the destination is a file, and we're going to add the file name to the end here. We'll call it entries.txt. Go ahead and add that, and we're good to go. All right, next we want to be uh, define how we bulk load that file into uh, our local MySQL database. So we'll go to the bulk loading step, and we'll bulk load into MySQL. Connect those up again, the green arrow. I previously defined a connection called demo uh, to my lo local uh, MySQL database, and here's the definition. I can test that. Yes, I can connect. Okay. So the uh, target table name is going to be called entries. Uh, the source file name, since the file doesn't exist yet, I'm going to type this in. So I'll say home slash demo slash entries slash entries dot txt. Uh, the fields in that file are pipe delimited. That was done in our MapReduce job. And we need to specify what fields we want to bulk load into the MySQL ta uh, table. So we'll hit the edit button. We'll grab all of them. Say yes. Uh, we'll replace data. I think we're all set. All right, let's save this. And let's go ahead and run this job now. And, and uh, we'll launch it. So first it's going to run the MapReduce program again. And that's going to take 20, 25 seconds in my environment um, before it proceeds to the uh, copy files and the bulk load steps, which should run almost instantaneously when we get there. So it looks like uh, Hadoop has set up um, our tasks and now the mapper is finished um, and it'll be uh, probably in our five or so seconds until the reducer completes. This is a very common technique uh, to run MapReduce programs, generate your data set, and then load that into a relational database. Hey, it's finished now. Uh, we can go ahead and interrogate our relational database, see if that data did get loaded. We can go to our demo database, right-click, and say Explore. And uh, we can look for the table. The table is the entries table. Right-click, and let's just go ahead and preview the first 100 rows. Actually, there's 34 rows in the table, and there it is. Our data was loaded into MySQL. So what you've seen here is uh, a MapReduce job generating an output file. We copy that file to the host operating system, and then we bulk loaded it into a database. Next, we'll demonstrate how to create a transformation that streams data directly from HDFS into the entries table. So let's create our new transformation. And the first thing we want to do is pull data out of HDFS. So we'll use the Hadoop file input step. And let's uh, browse and connect to HDFS and grab the right uh, directory, which is the entries directory. Um, we'll go ahead and add that, and then the uh, file is the part file. So that should, oops, that star, that should work. Uh, content, uh, we're gonna, it's Unix of type. There's no header. Uh, the delimiter is a pipe. Fields, let's get the fields. It notices this, there's three, and it gets the data type by interrogating the data, sampling it. So the first two are strings, last one's an integer. Let's name these the same name as our column names and our table to make life easy for ourselves. So, so category, section, I think the third column was entry count. Let's preview our rows, make sure we get the data properly from HDFS, and indeed we are. Okay, now we're just going to write to uh, the uh, table. So we'll go into the output uh, grouping and grab the table output step. Uh, we're just going to truncate and reload the table in this example. 
So our database connection is the demo connection again. The table is the entries table. Uh, we'll truncate and reload. We, again, we don't have to specify database fields since the stream metadata is identical to our uh, table metadata. Say OK. Uh, let's go ahead and save this. Um, we'll call this load entries. All right, and let's run. Boom, already finished. <laughs> Very fast. So let's go and uh, prove that it worked. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at the demo, uh, explore the demo connection again, I'll open up the table, the uh, entries table, and uh, let's uh, uh, preview the first 100 rows. And uh, see there's only 34, and we're good. So in this video, you learned how to extract data from HDFS to your host operating system and a relational database. You saw two techniques for doing this. One that pulled data out to the operating system and then bulk loaded. The other is which streamed data directly from an HDFS file into your tables. We did not create any operating system scripts. And there was no Java programming. We just used the graphical ETL programming techniques within PDI. We encourage you to explore the productivity gains you can get from Pentaho Big Data on your own. Thanks for watching and thank you for your interest in Pentaho.